another day of out running errands. Just got a haircut, thank God. Way overdue. I'm always like a month behind on my haircuts. I don't want to look like a hippie all the time, but um, anyway, I'm going to head out to my uh, little local mom and pop video game store, and uh, they've got some games down there I want to pick up, and perhaps a couple CDs and movies I've been looking for for a while, so I thought I'd take another couple minutes and just talk. And uh, go over my plans. Um, I haven't had done a lot of gaming. I haven't done a lot of gaming lately. Um, it's just been really chaotic. And um, I haven't had that much time, even though I've got some great new games. And when I get home, I'll show all of the things that I've been slowly acquiring. I'm getting more pickups. I mean, I haven't had a whole lot of time to play games, but I have had the money, so I thought I'd take advantage of it. You know, usually once a week or every couple weeks, I'll go down to my little local uh, mom and pop store, which is called Dimples, and I'll look for, um, I'll look for games. Uh, that I have on a list. I have a list written down of all my PlayStation 1 games that I want, all of the PlayStation 2, original Xbox games, stuff like that. So, um, I'm trying to find everything while I can, while the prices are still good. The prices are going up on some of the games, some of the Xbox original games. Most of the PS2 games are still fairly inexpensive. PlayStation 1, I'm trying to focus on uh, making a dent in my PlayStation 1 list. Um, I'm still getting a few uh, PS3 and Xbox 360 games, but not too many. I'm probably down to a list of maybe you know 15 to 20 games for the seventh gen uh, consoles. But I'm really focusing on trying to get you know the rest of the PS1, PS2, and Xbox games. And again, I've gotten you know I've got a couple um, PlayStation ones now. I have one PS2. I, I'm going to try to find a really clean original fat. PS2 because I do love the industrial design of it, and I think it'd be cool to have it uh, in my collection of consoles. Um, it's just really a matter of, um, oh jeez, it's traffic for days. It's really a matter of, um, of you know, finding, um, I want to get, uh, you know, one more PS2, and I think that's it. I've got I got three nice, good working and very clean original Xbox consoles, which I'm real happy with. And um, I'm going to see about probably getting another Xbox 360. I'm going to wait, and I'm hoping the prices will drop on those. And I'd like to get one more of those with a larger hard drive, another 320 gig hard drive, perhaps another E model or slim, you know, model. And uh, but I'll wait a year or so. I have a feeling that there'll be another price drop on those, and I'll buy one as a backup and just leave it in the box, just in case to preserve my, you know, legacy of gaming in case my current 360 takes a dump. Uh, the PS3, I still would like to find a, a find a 500 gig slim. Uh, as a backup, I had one of the smaller, I don't know, it's 120 or 160 uh, gig hard drive now, but it's fine. I have, I've only used about half of the hard drive, and I don't have as many games for the PS3, so I'm not too worried about it at the moment. But um, still, it's even, it's funny, but even when I don't have the time to game, I'm still happy. Just, I think about gaming all the time, and I still enjoy the hunt for the, you know, collectibles, and I've even been looking for, um, I find locally uh, occasionally some good um, strategy guides, which I love to find. I love art books and strategy guides. I'm one of the few people, and I'll buy them for, you know, virtually any game. I don't know why, but I just love seeing the static pictures and maps and the uh, locations of all the collectibles and things like that. So I collect, you know, some of my old gaming magazines. I still collect my um, you know, quite a few of my uh, strategy guides, and um, 
and I've got most of the games that I want. I'm getting down there now to where there's really a list of 20 or fewer games for each console. So I'm, I'm finally narrowing it down. I'm trying to buy them all locally to support my little local stores because I appreciate having a, a place locally where I can get everything. I think it's great. And I try to, you know, buy everything, um, you know, in town if I can. And then I go online when I just, when I strike out after four or five months of looking and I'm not finding it, I'm like, okay, if none of the six stores have this game and haven't had it for, you know, approaching six months, there's a good chance that they aren't going to get it. And so those are the ones that I'll go on eBay, you know, and uh, look for. And I try to find the best deals that I can. I still I cannot find uh, the GTA a trilogy for the original Xbox, which I'd love to get, which that's really expensive. You can spend a hundred bucks easy for that. So that's something that I'm considering. Uh, I'm probably going to have to go on eBay for it. I'm also looking for SSX 3 for the original Xbox, and I cannot find it. I, I love the game and uh, enjoyed playing it back in the day, and I'm having a hard time finding that. So it's one of those things where you have to, um, you got to be patient and look. Stay in this lane. Traffic is kind of a grind today, but it's Friday. Uh, my daughter's coming up from Los Angeles for the weekend, and so I'm looking forward to her visit. So I've been focusing on getting the house clean at home and getting things organized. I don't know if she still does gaming like she used to. I always bought her a PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. She played a lot of the Ratchet and Clank games and Spyro and love that stuff. I don't know if she's still into it, so she may look at me funny if I ask her to do some split-screen, uh, you know, gaming or whatever today, but she'll probably roll her eyes, but who knows? I might show her some of the um, PlayStation 4 games, and um, her boyfriend, I know, is in a game. He's more into, like, the League of Legends and Diablo and some of those kind of, you know, PC games, <coughs> MMOs and stuff like that, so... Uh, <coughs> He's usually interested in playing, like, Call of Duty, uh, you know, split-screen with me or something like that, so we'll see. He always kicks my ass in the Call of Duty split-screen, but um, it'll be fun. So I'm looking forward to that. So I've been spending, it's my day off, so I'm actually, you know, getting a lot of errands done. I'm going to go home and clean the house. I thought I'd squeak, uh, squeak out a, um, a little rant uh, real quick on the way of, you know, getting this pickup. And uh, they've got a couple games that they're holding for me, and then I'm going to also uh, bring my reading glasses in, because I can't even read, especially the PlayStation 1 titles. My eyes are getting so bad, I can't even read the little fine print on the leading edges of the games anymore. So this time I brought my reading glasses. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to really search the PS1 games and go through and see if I can find some gems, which I'm really excited about. So, And I might even look for some films as well, so get through this traffic. This truck is like, it's, it loads up. It loves to go fast, and it's it doesn't uh, do as well at the lower speeds. It, it has tall gears in it, so it likes to go 45, 55. It doesn't do as well on, uh, you know, 30 miles an hour, but the traffic is what it is. It's gotten worse over the years. But it's still, um, it's a nice day for a drive, and it's exciting to get a chance to go out and you know, find games for my collection. It's still one of the few things, even though I don't have the time for gaming, I always make the time to pick up new releases, and I make the time to find, um, you know, the games that I'm looking for from my collection. I'm so close now. I think next year I could probably get the remainder of most of the games that I want, and I'm trying to buy them now while they're still relatively affordable, because I have a feeling that down the road, five or ten years, we'll see a, a huge price increases with original Xbox and PlayStation 2 games, especially some of the more rare ones, and I'm already discovering that now. I've been trying to find Star Wars Battlefront 2 in a mint condition complete. I can find it, usually, but it's missing the booklet, or the disc is scratched up, So, and I won't buy those. I, I, I will only buy a mint game with very light scratches, almost no scratches, as close to perfect as possible. And uh, I, I don't mind if the case is a little worn or if the booklet inside is a little creased or dog-eared. I don't mind that. I just want it complete so that way I've got it for my collection. I don't, I'm not opposed to the greatest hits or the platinum hits ones and all that. I don't have an aversion to those. 
Um, for me, it's more about finding things that uh, I just want the games back. Now, there are a couple tall box PlayStation 1 games, like, you know, the original Need for Speed, um, and probably, uh, if I can afford it, I'd like to get an original tall box of Return Fire, but I have a feeling it's going to be overly expensive, so I may just have to live with, you know, some of the versions of those that I already have, just in the uh, kind of aftermarket jewel cases, if need be, and that's fine. So, it's a beautiful day, though. This is a great day to get out and cruise around. I'm just going to cut this heater back. And, um, got my Diet Pepsi with me, as usual. Almost there. We're getting there now. I'm going up to my Roseville location. And, uh, I haven't been here in a while. They're holding a few things for me. And I'm going to take a few minutes and go inside and, um, take probably 15-20 minutes and just quickly do a cursory of uh, some of those, like I said, the PlayStation and Xbox games. And then I also go through the Xbox 360 and PS3. I saw Dave at One Boys Post 1975 did a wonderful gameplay video of that House of the Dead Overkill, which I've been meaning to get. And I keep checking uh, my shelves on the PlayStation 3 shelves and um, I just haven't found anything yet. that one, so that's one that, uh, I mean, I could always go online and buy it, but I know if I'm patient, that one will, will pop up, I've seen it before in the past, so, I've got most of the PS3 games I want, there's not too many left that I'm looking for specifically, I'll probably buy some duplicates of some of the Rockstar games for the PlayStation 3, um, I understand they've got a new uh, GTA San Andreas that'll be downloadable only, that's coming out on the Xbox Live arcade uh, network, which ironically I had, I had it downloaded, the, the, the regular version, uh, off Xbox Live Arcade, and then I deleted it, because I already had the game for the PlayStation 2, and I was trying to clear up some space on my hard drive, so uh, I, I probably would buy that new one, it would be nice to have it in HD on the Xbox 360 and have it permanently in my hard drive. It is a wonderful sandbox game. It has a lot of fine points to it and great music. Um, you know, where I used to live in Los Angeles, anything with Los Santos in it is a big rush for me, so I'm excited about that. Um, we're almost there now. My dimples is just right over there. i got to just make this left. Another heavy day of traffic. There's a nice old Buick across the street over there. This is um, the Roseville area, which is pretty nice. I'm just going to pull up, make a left here, park out front, and um, be inside here in just a minute and get my games. But um, I'm also excited. I pre-ordered, uh, you know, the GTA 5 Remastered Edition at my GameStop, and I also have the the wonderful Far Cry 4, which looks fantastic. I keep seeing more and more new videos on this new Far Cry, and I'm really excited about playing that. Uh, it'll be more of the same, but I think it'll have a few additions. I like some of the new aerial stuff uh, with a little helicopter. I think it's really cool. I like the, the radical elevation changes and the whole concept of the Himalayas and a really vibrant, colorful cultures uh, that's just removed and different, which is one of the endearing things that I loved about Sleeping Dogs was all that stuff. Worm through my traffic here. Park out front. But, um, I just opened a few minutes ago. So I've got, you know, the Far Cry 4. I've got Mad Max pre ordered next year. Uh, Battlefield Hardline, I've got pre ordered. Alright, 
I'll be out in a few minutes, and uh, I'll go over when I get home. I'll go over what I've picked up. Well, it was a successful trip to my store. I'm glad I went. I called and asked them about a couple games, which they had, which was great. But it was um, a real surprise to find some games that I've been looking for for the longest time. And uh, so it was a great, uh, a great catch all in all. It was worth the time. That's why I enjoy going. It's just nothing like taking your time and, you know, picking things up, looking at them, looking at the condition of them, seeing if it's all complete, seeing if the disc is in great shape. You can't do that online. And you take a, a little bit of a chance buying stuff online, which I'm not opposed to. I mean, most of my online purchases, you know, 98% of them have been good. I haven't been really disappointed. I've never gotten screwed, never had a problem. Um, you just have to be careful. But uh, I really scored today. I got some great gems uh, for a couple different systems for the PlayStation 1. Uh, some really good uh, games, which I've been looking forward to for some time, as well as um, some Xbox original games, which I'm really excited about. So it was a great, uh, great haul, and I found uh, the one PlayStation 3 game, House of the Dead Overkill, cheap for like 10 bucks. Uh, in, in excellent condition for the PlayStation 3, thanks to uh, you know Dave at Lawn Boys Post 1975. Thanks Dave for the recommendation. I enjoyed your uh, gameplay of it, and uh, I can't wait to dive into that. I don't know how it'll be, you know, using a controller versus you know the motion controls, but I'm anxious to try it out. I, d I definitely like that that kind of grindhouse um, film effect and all that. I think it's pretty cool on it. So. But, um, yeah, I really scored. I'm real happy with my pickups today. Uh, it almost makes up for the <laughs> lack of gaming lately, which I just haven't had that much time to game, sadly. But um, things are looking up. stickers off and the tape. Sometimes they'll put a piece of scotch tape to seal them up so that you can't open them up to look at them, which drives me crazy. So I always have to take the scotch tape off as well as um, all the price stickers and stuff. So Some of them come off easy, some don't. I use rubber cement thinner uh, to get those off that are, are resistant to coming off and it doesn't haze or harm the plastic case cover. Or damage any of the uh, the actual artwork if the stickers are on. Watch out, little squirrel! Watch out, little guy! Squirrels. It's my neighborhood here. Almost home now. It's always nice to be home. There's one of my cats. So I'll take the stuff inside and, and show you what I picked up. Hi friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. I uh, just got home, I took my stickers off my games and I thought I'd show you some of my pickups that I'm excited. I'm always excited for every, <laughs> anything in the way of gaming, especially pickups. And I, say, I know I say that a lot, I'm excited, I can't wait for this, I'm excited about that. But I genuinely am very excited about many of these pickups. Some of these I had almost given up on. I've been looking for upwards of six months for these locally and just haven't found them and I'm delighted. A few of them I called and had them hold and the rest of them amazingly were there. Quite a few that I've been looking for so I'm excited and this is getting me one step closer to completing the collections of a few of, of these consoles. So here they are. Um, I started off with one CD. I have all of the other Phil Collins CDs. For some reason I was missing this. I used to have the original vinyl records of all these. And so I found this Hello, I Must Be Going Phil Collins uh, CD used. I got it for like $3, really cheap, at my dimple store in mint condition. It's in great shape. The case is a little scuffed, but this will round out my Phil Collins collection for a few of you music uh, friends of mine out there. 
Uh, th these are the ones I'm really pumped. I finally found Twisted Metal 2. Greatest hits, all complete, excellent condition. This is one of my favorite Twisted Metal games. Many people prefer this one over the first. I still like the first one a little bit better because it was first. And the main reason why I got my PlayStation 1, because the 3DO didn't have anything as cool as Car Combat at the time. That was the big selling point. I had literally to make a decision that night on the 3DO or the original PlayStation the first week it came out. And I chose the PlayStation because of the Twisted Metal franchise. I'm not a big fan of 3 and 4, although I have played 3. I've never played 4. Um, and I do like the new one that came out for the PlayStation 3. Kind of a reboot. But Twisted Metal 2, massive split screen on the couch with my friends. My wife and I have played this to death. I've played every vehicle unlocked, every scene that I could see. i put a, a tremendous amount of time into Twisted Metal 2. Now, I have this downloaded off the PlayStation Network into my PlayStation 3 as well. But I had to get it for the original. So I can play this on my PlayStation 2 or the PlayStation 1. So I'm really happy about this. Very excited. Uh, Road Rash 3D. I've been waiting to get this. I haven't found it anywhere. I have the original Road Rash in mint condition as well, and I love that. But this is a real treat. I had played this through and done every race twice all the way through. Uh, this was a, an amazing, groundbreaking uh, change from the original Road Rash on the PlayStation 1 and the 3DO. And I've never played the one on the Genesis, and I want to get those other ones that are on the Genesis. But uh, this is a fantastic game. Uh, it was one of the first kind of polygon-built uh, 3D worlds. It said 3D, but it really was referring to kind of a 3D look and feel. You could lean into the bikes more. There's actually a lot more combat that you could do. You didn't always have to do the combat in the first one, but this one, uh, it, it was a lot more mandatory. These guys were just relentless, wouldn't leave you alone. You really get the sensation of speed and weaving through traffic really good in this one. I can't wait to dive back into Road Rash 3D, and I want to try to find Jailbreak, which I've never played, which will be a treat if I can find it. Very happy about this. And then finally, I found my Driver 2. This was an amazing game. This game and the first Driver got me through some hard times, which I've mentioned in some of my older rants when I had a head-on collision and was laid up for five months in bed. I couldn't do anything. And I played Driver 1 and 2 to death. Uh, a wonderful game. Uh, great scenes in Chicago, wonderful cut scenes throughout it. Actually, a pretty good story. It had Rio, uh, Rio, de, Rio de Janeiro, um, Cuba, uh, they had Chicago, and there, God, there was one other city. I can't remember what it was. It'll probably occur to me. Oh, Las Vegas, that's right. And uh, I don't think you could get out of your car in this one. I, I don't think. Um, uh, until you until Driver 3, which I also got recently, but this came on two discs. Again, it's everything is complete. It just came out of the little slot here. The discs are in great shape. Comes with the original booklet, and it came on two discs, uh, which is interesting. It's the greatest hits, but I love now. I have all of the Driver games, which I'm really happy to have the full collection of all. I have Driver 1, 2, 3, and Parallel Lines, which is my favorite, but. This was groundbreaking. Just to go in and just to take on the cops alone in kind of the free roam mode is a blast. You can still get massive police chases, relentless cop chases, wonderful editing where you can go through and make your own little mini movies of your favorite car chase scenes and what have you. This game is an awesome and a must get. If, you're, if you love racing games, if you especially love cars and, and really good driving games, for the PlayStation uh, 1. This is before Grand Theft Auto 3, so this is really one of the pioneer open world games that you cannot lose. Driver 1 and 2. This is an improvement over Driver 1 and really a must get game for the PS1. Finally, thanks to Dave at Lawn Voice Post 1975, and I've seen other market, uh, CGR also did a wonderful review of this a long time ago, but I've been very excited about getting this House of the Dead Overkill. Extended cut. Found a great copy of this. I'm really excited about this. Thanks, Dave, for your wonderful gameplay of this. You really wet my whistle for this one. Hopefully, I can play it, you know, okay on uh, without motion controls using the controller. But I'm excited about this. I also finally got they they were like almost a week late getting my copy of The Walking Dead season two. 
I also have Season 1 here as well, which I've been wanting to play for Halloween. And then if I have time, maybe I can start Season 2 as well. So I'm really excited about the Walking Dead uh, games, and I want to get into these real soon. I also bought like a $50 uh, mic uh, Microsoft points card and just to have some money in my account for some downloadable games and what have you because this new Walking Dead TV show is out. I don't have cable TV. It's the only show that I'll actually pay per view and pay for each episode. It's like $3 to watch each epi episode in HD. So I put that money in there so each week I can watch a new episode. So I've been anxious to play the Walking Dead and Telltale games even more so now that I'm starting to enjoy this fifth season of The Walking Dead, which is pretty good. Now, I was going to get, and I talked about this in the early part of this little rant when I was driving, is I wanted to get all three of the trilogy of the Grand Theft Auto games. Well, I finally found one and two, or, or I'm sorry, Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City that came in a twin pack, and they're in mint condition. A little scuffed on the covers, but they're all complete with the booklets and the maps and the whole deal in wonderful shape. So I went ahead and got, uh, these were wrapped together. I bought these and paid one price for this, and then I also picked up a really clean copy, all complete, of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And I just mentioned they're going to be coming out with an HD version of this off Xbox Live Arcade, which you'll be able to download. But I wanted to have these for the Xbox. Something about the Rockstar games, they look and play amazing on the original Xbox. So I had to have these. Because the prices of that trilogy box set are really expensive. And it's going to be a hundred and something bucks. And I just wanted to have them in the meantime. I could always sell these or give these away down the road, but I wanted to at least have them in my collection just in case I decide if I ever decide not to buy because then it will be you know 150 or 200 dollars for a, a mint a, you know trilogy box set, which would be nice to have. But I don't know if I want to spend that money, so at least I got them. I got them pretty reasonably too. Um, finally, I found SSX3. This is one of my favorite snowboarding games. I love snowboarding games. I used to play the Cool Borders one, two, and three in the original PlayStation. And there's another one called Amped, which they had there, which I've never played, but it looks good. But this one's amazing. And if you unlock, the, near the, if, at the end of the, of the game, you can unlock this massive thing where it connects every aspect of the mountain. And you can go on this incredibly epic long ride at the very end. So it has some pretty good music in it, too. Uh, this is a must-play must game if you love snowboarding. This is one of my favorites. I also have the new, kind of the reboot, SSX for the PlayStation 3, which I enjoy as, as much. This one's a lot like that one. I really like it. It's more, you can kind of open world, you can kind of go the way you want down the mountain, which is really cool and pretty epic. So if you like snowboarding and really uh, cool racing games, you can't beat these SSX games. This is my favorite of the series by far. Now, I was amazed. I took a chance and went in there, and I found the original Roadkill, which I've never even seen before in person until today. I was shocked. I had my mouth hanging open. This is kind of a holy grail for me, believe it or not. I actually prefer this in some ways over Twisted Metal. Now, Twisted Metal 1 and 2 are epic, and they're always going to have a special place in my heart and my console, but... I love this Roadkill, and I ordered this for the PlayStation 2. I thought this was a PS2 exclusive, but I was wrong. It actually was on the Xbox as well, so I'm dying to put this in and check this out tonight. This is one I'm going to be hooking my Xbox up right here at my other TV and with my PBR, and I want to try to get some footage of this because I have just went through and finished this last year, last summer, on the PlayStation 2 and it had an absolute blast reliving it. But I want to see if the graphics are even better. This is some of the best radio station banter I've ever heard. This really cool kind of futuristic apocalyptic world that you drive through. Fascinating talk radio. It's funnier than shit. And it's got just wonderful detailed vehicles. Uh, kind of like the Road Warrior, you know, where there's a guy in the back with a machine gun that's helping you. And there's just tons of carnage going on around you. Uh, there's some good sniping sections. You get three basic worlds that you, or cities that you unlock. And it's just great music, wonderful licensed music. In fact, I got a copyright um, strike, or not a strike, but where I had to t take down the, um, the um, I had to take down the video. Uh, or maybe it's still up. I, I'm not sure. But I, I got flagged because I had they had some music from April Wine, one of my favorite Canadian bands, that was in this when I was playing this on one of my CRT TVs last year. And I got nailed for it. So I'll have to try to see if I can shut the music off this time around. But I love this game. 
This is a real gem. If you ever get, get it for the PlayStation 2 or the original Xbox. If you want to see one of the finest car combat games ever made, really funny, really dark, twisted sense of humor, uh, a fascinating game, very adult-like, but I love this to death, is the original Roadkill. I can't rave highly enough about this. I got a special embossed metal license plate for pre-ordering this back in 2003. It came out right around Halloween this time in 2003. God, it's been uh, you know 11 years ago. It's hard to believe. And then to wrap it up, I you know I, I already had uh, the original Night Gallery. Now I have all the original Twilight Zones and a special box set of five seasons. And I and I found this for uh, I think of the early to mid two thousands. I bought this and it was the only season available. Well, I saw some posts on my Facebook and someone would mention, oh yeah, you can get all the Night Galleries now. So I called my nipple store and ordered brand new uh, season two and season three of Night Galleries. Now I have all of them. These are wonderful. It's kind of like an extension of the original Twilight Zones that Rod Serling wrote and directed many of these. And uh, the season two has got like, you know, 19 hours of, of uh, footage in it. And then there's a lot less, maybe half that in season three, but still a wonderful, it's nice to have all of them now in a complete set. So this Halloween, what a perfect timing for this. They said it could take eight weeks to order them. I said, that's okay. I'll go ahead and order them away. I went in there today. He goes, oh, good. You saved me a phone call. You, your, uh, your night galleries came. And I go, oh, thank God. So the timing was perfect. This was really a, 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 a wonderful little bonus, which I wasn't expecting. I'd highly recommend uh, these wonderful little vignettes that are done, uh, kind of like, you know, haunted house type stories and uh, very much like the Twilight Zones. And they aren't quite as polished and quite as good, and they are in color, but it's worth it just to see Rod Serling with his kind of 70s long sideburns. That alone is worth it to me. And the cigarette constantly smoldering in his hand. But anyway, so I finally... Uh, uh, that was my pickups. I had it was a wonderful day, a wonderful sunny day. I'm looking forward to seeing my daughter, and we're going to probably do a little bit of gaming this weekend. We'll, I'll leave it up to them, whatever they want to see and play. They'll probably want to see a little bit of the PS4 and stuff like that. So I'll probably show them a few games if they want to play some games. I'll definitely be playing them with them. So I'm going to wrap this video up and get it uploaded. And then I would get on with cleaning this house, a little dusty. So I've been kind of taking care of the yard and everything, but now i got to finish, get about a couple hours of dusting and cleaning the windows and mirrors and all that kind of stuff. So that's what my uh, Friday afternoon consists of. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm hoping to get back into some hardcore gaming here. I still have not put in Sleeping Dogs or Alien Isolation, uh, which I'm bummed about, but I'm going to try to at least start The Walking Dead Season 1. So again... Thanks for watching. Enjoy your games and collections, and I look forward to seeing your pickup videos as well. Thanks for watching.